Personal accountability and responsibility. Let's talk about that. The very first sin man ever committed with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, eating of the forbidden fruit, we find Eve blaming her sin on the devil. Now, was the devil wrong in tempting Eve to sin? Obviously, yes. But he didn't force Eve to sin. At the end of the day, Eve was responsible for her own actions. And it's the same thing with Adam. The idea of implicitly blaming God and Eve for him sin was Eve wrong um, in encouraging, if not enticing, Adam to eat of the forbidden fruit after she did? Yes, but she didn't force Adam to sin. And Adam was responsible, again, for his own actions. Fast forward in the Bible years later to a man named Joseph. We really have to admire, if you think about it, Joseph as a young man resisting the temptations repeatedly from Potiphar's wife. Let's just say, though, for sake of illustration, that Joseph didn't resist those temptations and one day gave in to them. Could we make the argument or say that Joseph was justified and that Potiphar's wife was to blame for his actions? No, no. Potiphar's wife was clearly wrong in what she did. But had Joseph submitted, he would have been wrong too. He would have been responsible for his own actions. Now, thankfully, he did the right thing again. But just think about that for sake of illustration when it comes to personal accountability and responsibility. I think in some ways we have to be somewhat sympathetic, for instance, towards the Apostle Peter. Now, by sympathetic, I don't mean justified. Okay, there's a big difference. I mean, imagine yourself in Peter's shoes on the night that Jesus was arrested, and by not denying Jesus would likely mean you would be arrested and crucified with him. I don't know about you, but if if I'm in Peter's shoes, I'm I'm not for sure what I would do. I I don't know. Um, But because I don't know what I would do doesn't mean I don't know what is the right thing to do, okay? But Peter, though, could not blame his enemies for his sins, Were they wrong and perhaps uh, pressuring him or in knowing that had he not denied Jesus, you know, would have been punished? Yeah, they would have been wrong and were wrong in what they did to Jesus. But at the end of the day, Peter was responsible for his own actions and Peter sinned. We need to remember that today. Just because someone encourages us to sin, entices us to sin, or just because someone mistreats us and there is that temptation to respond in a sinful way and return the favor, doesn't make it right. I say that because most likely you're seeing this video on social media, for instance, through Facebook. You know, I've seen some pretty mean, hurtful, and just sinful comments that people have made in the past few months towards Christians, okay? But just because somebody is very mean and derogatory towards you or or me doesn't mean that we have the right to be the same way. Nor can we blame any wrong that we do from from them. We're we're not justified. I kind of makes me angry, and I'm sure maybe it does you too, when you see right now the idea of censoring the freedom of speech of some on various platforms and to top it off may frustrate us even more to see some being completely okay with it because well you know it doesn't censor my freedom of speech just yours right well that doesn't make it right for us to be mean or hateful or unkind in in, in any way either. We have to remember that as Christians, that even though we're perhaps living in a time where people believe that they're justified in um, blaming others for their sin because of this or because someone did this to me first or, or, or whatever, we live by a higher standard and we live by a higher calling. And we have to remember that I want to close out and leave with you a passage of Scripture that I want to encourage you as well to to look at in depth and reflect upon it for for your life as as I'm trying to do in mine. It's found in 1 Peter chapter 2, 
beginning in verse 21 to verse 25. Notice it says, For to this you were called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins, his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls.